So, we have an amazing speaker who is Ben Gao. Ben has been here before with us. He's an executive pastor at CCV, where he leads the worship team, the production team, media arts, marketing, and communication. They just keep adding more and more interactive technology. Hey, Danny, there's a technology guy right there. Um, and next-gen ministry teams. It's just amazing. He leads um, so many things, but one of the key things I've seen is his heart for the Lord. And both Ben and his wife, Jen, live in North Phoenix. They have two children. With that, can we do a warm ISI welcome for our special guest? I think... Uh... Good morning, men. Lewis, I think you and I both just got signed up for more than we realized back here in the tech booth. So I'll see. I'll meet you with you, Danny. We'll see what I can see what I can do to help. Uh, I am so honored to be with you all this morning. Hope you all are doing great. I loved. I was here about a, um, a year and a half ago speaking, and I've been so looking forward to coming back because I love this group of men and what you guys are committed to. Many of you going to work during the week. Saturday morning could be a morning to sleep in and chill out, but you're here being sharpened, being stretched, and uh, so I'm, I'm pumped. I'm inspired by that. I came with my ISI shirt today, right? I'm repping for you guys. After Ted dropped off about 10 of them in my office, I had to <laughs> constantly do the merch drop. Hey, real quick, we're going to sing a song, and then I'm going to dive into what I want to talk about today, what, God, what I really feel like God's put on my heart for this group. Before I do, though, um, you all know how blessed you are with the team of people who put this on. And I know there's many volunteers, lots of volunteers diving in, but Shaw, uh, Danny, Danny's got David back there with him, helping out with AV, and then, of course, Ted. Um, can we just give it up for these, these men who are helping to, to put this on? You guys are awesome. All right, let's stand up. Yeah. Bright and early, we're going to wake up our voices. Right? And I've heard that this group of men can sing loud. Is that right? What's that? <laughs> loud enough. Hey, the Bible talks about a joyful noise. It doesn't talk about singing on key. Nowhere is that in Scripture. So, we don't have lyrics on the screen, um, which is fun, because I think we all probably know at least a portion of this song. If not, just dive in, and if we're off-key, maybe we'll be singing different words to you. It doesn't matter. God just, God wants to hear our hearts this morning. God always wants to hear a heart um, that reflects just gratitude. We're going to talk about a lot about why we sing today, but I thought it'd just be fitting for us to start off this morning um, singing together this simple song of worship that I love. It talks about God's faithfulness. Join me. Come on. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands. The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. In all my life you have been faithful In all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. I'll declare it this morning all my life. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Every day of our life, Lord, you've never left us. You will never forsake us. Sing this out. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after. I will sing the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Hey, check, check. Hey, you guys do sing loud, and you sold yourself short. Most people were on key. There was a couple in the back I heard that were a little off, but <laughs> pray with me. Father, we want to start our morning that way, just with gratitude. Before we bring any requests in our prayers, uh, God, we just want to acknowledge who you are. You're the God who's faithful to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, beyond in our lives today. You're so faithful. You're so good. Yeah, and so just gathered here together as brothers, as men, um, we just want to acknowledge your sovereignty, your lordship, no matter what we're walking through and what season of life, God, you are always good, you're always faithful, and you are trustworthy. And so we just affirm our trust in you, bless this time that we have this morning, may it be fruitful and beneficial uh, to all of us, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for letting, uh, guys, for letting me come in today. I'm, as I shared, excited to be here. My name is Ben Gowell. If I haven't met you, um, I have a wife, my wife Jen, of 22 years. We got two kids. I've got an older daughter who's a gymnast, and my son is, he doesn't know what he wants to do yet. He dabbles around in a bunch of things. Uh, BMX bike rider, golfer, but we've been in the valley here for about 14 years. Been on staff at a church down the road, CCV, for, for that time. Moved actually from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We got any Midwesterners in the room? Okay. All right. So, yeah, go Vikings, um, and y'all, so y'all know how good it's, it is to be away from the Minnesota winters. Uh, we made the polar opposite move to come out here. Today, uh, I'm really excited to talk to you about what we just did, this act of singing together. Why do we worship? And this morning, I want to talk specifically about worship through singing and music. I think it's good for us to recognize right up front that we're all wired Um, just a little bit differently when it comes to this topic. For some of you, times of worship through singing, you come in with your voices warmed up because you got a large coffee, you're ready to go, ready to belt it out. Um, For others of you, the thought of singing in public or running the risk of having other people hear you sing is about one of the most terrifying things you can imagine. Uh, But I want to talk to you about our times of corporate worship like we just did today And look at why there's such an important part of our personal lives as well as our time together as a community. You guys in for that today, this morning? Okay. Um, So some of you may remember, last time I was here, I shared some of my background. I talked about using your influence. And so I just want to recap a little bit of my journey to set this up as it relates to this morning's message. Grew up in Michigan, in the Midwest, found my older brother's electric guitar in my parents' rafters, pulled it down, painted it green, dyed my hair orange, and started playing Metallica. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple rockers in the room. Long story short, I've got a band going, we're writing songs, and I'm walking down the hallway of my church and my uh, student pastor, my youth pastor says, hey, what would you think about bringing your guitar into the youth worship band? Which, 
is nothing like it is today. At the time, at least in my church, it was like a saxophone, a piano, and like eight singers. There was no, there was no drums, there was no space for an electric guitar, but I showed up. I didn't know the right chords, but I had a space, and the senior pastor was popping his head in the door like during our rehearsals, like, what is happening to the youth worship team? I'm very nervous. But I had a space to learn and to fail and to grow, and I found something happening in my own heart that I can't quite explain, but I found um, such a joy in seeing people not just respond to a concert, but see them point their direction this way and respond to their creator in these times of worship. As bad as the team must have sounded or as I was making it sound, there was this beautiful noise of people lifting their voices heavenward like we just did, and that began to just grow in my heart. And so went to college, studied music, uh, out of college, was able to go on tour with uh, a number of different music artists, and have been around the world, um, leading people in worship and being a part of doing that. And so I look back on that catalytic moment, that, that brief conversation in the hallway with my student pastor when he said, it was probably five minutes at the most, he said, would you come play your guitar in the youth group? And I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. I'm pretty confident I wouldn't be where I am today had that guy not taken a shot and a risk on a young kid like me and gave me a space to develop. So so a real quick recap on that. Keep investing in the next generation. This is not my message for today, but I just want to encourage you guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to be intentional with who's next up. And your words carry more weight than you realize. There are people that you have influence with in your life. Um, I just want to encourage you to keep speaking life, keep being in tune with the Holy Spirit to speak life into younger people, the next generation. All right, I got to watch it or I'll go completely off script and talk about that for my remaining time. Of 16 and a half minutes, if I go over, Danny and Shaw have told me that they'll hit a buzzer sound and give me the cane. So I'm going to hit this. We're going to dive in. That is a summary of my story. I want to submit to you guys today that the time we spend together singing in worship has has the potential to be so much greater than a show or an experience, um, to have so much more significance than any concert or entertainment ever could. I want us to take a look at this, this very thing and see how singing is something that's actually mentioned time and again in Scripture and is such a key part of our expression and worship to God. As we dive into this further today, it's important for us to recognize that we are all worshipers. Do you all know that? We're all worshipers. When we talk about this topic, we have to back up a bit And we have to really adopt a good theological framework because at times we may uh, too often leap leap to the assumption that worship equals just music. Um, And it's true that that music is a powerful way for us to express our worship. Um, But worship occurs, occurs really throughout our entire lives. We are never not worshiping. Our affections are always oriented towards something or towards some someone. Uh, worship comes from the word proskuneo, the Greek word, which means to give reverence or worth to something or someone. It literally means to give worth-ship to something. See, God built in all of us this innate desire, this inescapable desire to worship. And His desire is that we would really turn our worship towards Him. Uh, but many people in our world have forgotten this truth and decided to, uh, that God's no longer worthy of being worshipped, but they can't escape the desire to worship something or someone. So instead, oftentimes, our worship is turned to other places. We see this all over the place. We turn it towards a house, a boat, a car, an admired athlete, um, another person. There's so many things that are vying for our attention and our giving of worth. So everyone worships, everyone gives value and worth to something. It's just a matter of what and when. We can't help but worship. So I want to talk specifically, you know, this, this aspect, worship, Romans 12, 1 says, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing, he says, I beseech you, brethren, present your whole bodies as a living sacrifice. This is your spiritual act of worship. So before we dive into just singing, we recognize that, man, every aspect of our life can be worshiped to God, right? Our work, Colossians talks about whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord and not to human masters, working as unto him. So our whole lives really is, is, can be worshipped to God. But I want to talk specifically about singing uh, in this message. Okay, so we get that we're all worshipers, but why singing? Why do we sing every time we're in church or gathering like this? It's an important question. If we sing without understanding God's purpose for it, 
we may not be motivated to sing and we may not benefit from it in the way God intends for all of us to. This morning, I want to look at just three key things that Scripture tells us about the importance of worship through music and singing. Sorry, I don't have a slide deck, so you'll just have to make some notes on your phone. But this will be really simple. Three things I want to hit on. Number one, we sing because God invites us to. He invites us to. If you were to guess, how many times do you, would you say singing is mentioned in the Bible? What do you think? 300, not enough. Sing, singing is mentioned 400 times in Scripture. And 50 of those times are actually direct commands or exhortations to sing. Really commands to sing. Um, it's something we're instructed to do because God is worthy of our praise. And you know, songs have been written about everything under the sun. Um, but can you guess what topic has been written about more in music and in songs than any other topic? Love songs, right? <laughs> of course. We sing about what's important to us because music is the language of our hearts and our emotions. This is part of God's design. Psalm 96, 1 through 4 says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Notice this scripture doesn't say try to sing. It doesn't say uh, consider singing, but only if you have a really nice voice that God's going to enjoy listening to, <laughs> as we just talked about here a few seconds ago. No, we're, we're told very simply in Scripture to sing as a way to express our thanks and gratitude to Him, to give Him worship. We sing to Him first and foremost because He's worthy of it. Second, singing is a way to focus and to not forget. Not forget what? Psalm 103 has the answer to this. Psalm 103, 2 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. David wrote this in the Psalms because he realized uh, something deep down I think we're all aware of. We are prone to forget and to lose sight of what's important to us. David in that Psalm was actively reminding his own heart to recount and to take stock of God's many blessings. And we just did that in that song briefly. God, all my life, you've been faithful, you've been good. We have to kind of jumpstart sometimes our own memory, lest we focus on the critical, the things that are going wrong. It's just, it's a good practice for us in prayer, personal devotion, and singing to go, man, but, but God, you've been so good. Despite this, and despite this chapter, you've been so good, you've been faithful. So it reminds us, it focuses us, and we see examples of this throughout Scripture where singing is used as a means to remember God's faithfulness. You don't have to look far in Scripture to see multiple examples. Remember this, uh, the Israelites were released after 400 years in captivity in Egypt. Moses led them through the Red Sea, and their first response when they reached the other side was singing songs of celebration to God about His deliverance. They witnessed God's faithfulness, and their response was to sing about it. In Acts uh, 16.25, it says, Paul and Silas prayed and sang hymns to God even while in prison. They remembered that God's... By the way, uh, I know some of you... Do some of you volunteer in the prisons? I know I'm, a couple of you do. And you want to hear people singing loudly and, and knowing that... The, just just sitting, sitting with some of these men who have found Christ in prison, it's, it's beautiful. I encourage you to do that. I want to get back. Paul and Silas, they're singing hymns to God. They remember God's faithfulness to them and actively put their trust in Him through singing. Uh, at, at, even right at the moment, they could have given up all hope. They're in prison. And we go on to read in the story that night, uh, some incredible things happened. The earthquake, the prison doors flew open. The prisoners' chains were loose. Paul and Silas actually were able to lead their warden to Christ, <laughs> faith in Christ. Uh, they, were, they were singing their praise to God in the midst of a difficult time. So focusing and not forgetting. Let me, let me uh, give you this example. Have you ever gotten a song stuck in your head? Yep, you're thinking of one right now. Careful, it might be stuck there the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, one of those moments you could be doing absolutely nothing. Maybe you're at work, at school, for whatever reason, you have this song that keeps playing over and over in your mind. Maybe it's the latest pop hit you heard on the radio or a song your kids are into. Maybe for some of you country music fans, it involved dirt roads breaking up, crying, and your truck breaking down on the side of the road. No offense, country music fans, I love you all. Uh, 
maybe for some of you it's a classic rock anthem like Don't Stop Believing." I don't know what y'all listen to. But you may not even remember when you first heard the song. Maybe it was a song you liked, but as we all know, that can cut both ways too, right? You can get a really uh, terribly annoying song stuck in your mind uh, that can get caught on repeat in your head. I'm sure you all have, have had that experience, so I'll spare you from singing any songs to not trigger anyone here uh, with, a, <laughs> with a song you don't want stuck in your head. But think about this. How many things do we teach our kids from a very early age using music that we want them to learn and to memorize, right? We teach them their ABCs, and we set it to music. It sticks. It sticks that way. So songs have a way of pulling on our hearts and emotions and remaining in our memories for a long time. And because of this, because of this, music is a powerful and effective way to get the truth of God's Word into our minds and into our hearts. C.J. Mahaney, a preacher, calls singing take-home theology because the best songs we sing together end up serving you as a brief, easy-to-memorize, deeply biblical summary of important truth from Scripture. So when choosing our songs uh, for worship services, there's a few different filters we can, that can and should be used. But one of the primary filters is just knowing that any songs we use for times of corporate worship are grounded and true to God's Word. Um, that as you sing them, you can be confident knowing there's nothing that's contradictory to Scripture. And when these songs stick with you well into your week, you're not only recounting the melody and the music, but you're, you're really reminded of the truth of Scripture. Number three, singing unifies us as the church. The Apostle Paul talks about this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. He says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. You know, worship in the church, uh, like we are gathered here, has been something that's gone on for thousands of years. Uh, that's actually really encouraging to me. That this isn't something that came out just 30 years ago with uh, you know, modern church bands or Christian radio. We're literally joining with the saints through the ages of doing this, uh, this practice of lifting songs to God. The Apostle Paul talks about the great crowd, crowd of witnesses uh, that we join in with to declare these timeless truths. So it's such a unifying time for us as the body of Christ. And we have all different types of people from many different backgrounds here. Um, a wide range of ages, ethnicities, professions, personalities, the list goes on and on. It's an incredible thing to see people from so many different walks of life coming together here to grow in community and to grow in our faith. And when we sing these songs together as believers, it unifies us in putting the focus on who? On Jesus. On Jesus. We take our eyes off of ourselves our problems, we put them on Him, and it focuses us there. And this kind of unity that, that happens in these moments, I, I believe it's not only encouragement to those who have made a decision to follow Jesus already, like so many of you have, but I also think it's something that's incredibly impel, uh, compelling and shines like a bright light um, to this world, really to our world, sharing the story of who our God is and what He can do uh, to a world that so desperately needs to hear it. So I want to encourage you to try joining in uh, times of worship through singing. I know, just haven't heard you, you guys are already on board with that. You guys are already doing that, leaning in. But to continue to move from spectator to participant, and in so doing, make these songs your prayers. Um, the goal for these songs and the words we sing is to be an overflow of the expression of what's going on in here. Now here's the reality uh, when we walk into a gathering like this sometimes. Some of you... You've had an incredible week. You show up ready to worship and thank God for the, all the good things that have continually happened in your life. And if that's you, I think that's a correct and good response to have. Um, man, gratitude for all God has done. Praise doesn't always have to cost us something. Praise is often our response to some action that directly benefits us. And because of this, we feel gracious in our response to it. We often find it easy to praise God from the same motivation, when He's blessed us, when He's helped us, protected us, we feel generous towards Him, and we can sing, worship, and talk about how good He is because we've seen it with our own eyes, right? Those are the times when it's like, man, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to dive into worship. For many of us, though, on any given day, week, season, myself included, 
I recognize sometimes we don't come through the doors with quite the same zeal or fervor uh, for this. Let's be honest, life can be difficult at times. One of the things I love about this group and the whole title, Iron Sharpening Iron, is, is it's, a, it's a, um, a catalyst for making us stronger in life, being able to persevere. And you men are sharpening each other in that way, going back out into the world with more strength than you came in. I love that that happens here. But life can be hard at times. Worship is not about pretending that life holds no difficulties, putting on a fake smile or hiding it when you walk through the door. If there's any safe place, we should be able to keep it real um, and, and that should help facilitate that. It should be in our worship services and gatherings like this. I love that King David's story is full of raw honesty about living the life of a true worshiper. I encourage you to read through the Psalms. Um, where, he, where he models what it means not just to celebrate in worship, which he does, but also to be honest with God in worship when things are difficult. Even for him uh, to the edge of despair, David was not afraid to express his lament to God because he knew that God could handle it. Maybe you've had a crazy morning just getting the kids ready to dress to get out the door. Maybe somebody cut you off on the freeway and then there are those more serious times when God didn't come through the way that we hoped he would. The medical test comes back positive. Spouse wants a divorce. A child is wayward. The mortgage company calls in the loan. God seems very far away, and praise and worship to him is the last thing on our minds. We can't see his goodness, and circumstances scream that he has forgotten us. So I understand when the very last thing we may feel like doing is singing songs of worship. Personally, I've lost um, several dear loved ones uh, over the past couple years. Just lost my father a couple months ago. It was not unexpected. He lived a good life. It was my wife and I was honored to see him over the finish line. We've, had, we've experienced loss, as I know many of you have um, at times in your life. And reading through David's writings in the Psalms, I've done that several times. They've just been such an encouragement and a reminder to me of God's faithfulness and his ability to to um, handle my grief and help me process that well. So to praise God in times of, of loss or grief requires something of us. It requires personal sacrifice. It takes an act of surrendering our will before a God that we don't fully understand. And so when we bring a sacrifice of praise, we choose to believe that even though life is not going as we think or hope it should, God is still good and God can still be trusted. Amen? Amen. When we choose to praise God and trust Him in spite of the storms of life, He is honored and our faith grows deeper. Those times of sacrificial worship when I've stepped up um, like I am here on this stage to lead worship, whether at my home church or in some other setting, I can't tell you how many times as I've opened my mouth to sing these words of truth that my heart and my mind become tuned in to the reality of what I'm singing about. Can you relate to that? Come in distracted, things on my heart, my mind. I just, ah, don't want to sing. And then I open my mouth, and as I sing these promises from God's Word, I'm reminded my heart, something happens in my heart where it's recalibrated, it's retuned. My perspective is refreshed and aligned with Him. And the stress from my week, the noise of life, uh, all the concerns that may be on my mind, they don't magically disappear. But my perspective is refreshed. My heart is aligned and I remember God's goodness, Psalm 31, 9. I remember his faithfulness and promise to walk with me through anything, Matthew 28, 20. I remember that the joy of the Lord is my strength, Nehemiah 8, 10. I remember that the truth of scripture is a solid rock I can build my life on, lead my family in, 2 Timothy 3, 16. I recall the fact that when I was far off running the other direction, doing my own thing, the Lord in his great kindness drew me to a place of repentance and dependence on him, Romans 2, 4. And I remember that he alone is worthy of my worship, Deuteronomy 10, 21. I can give you those scriptures if you'd like them. I rattled through them pretty quickly. All these songs we sing, if you look at them, man, they're rooted in the truth of scripture. And we're reminded. And so, listen, true worship is what you do regardless of how you feel. And please know this today, men. God is looking for your heart above all else. And sometimes to get our hearts in the right place, the best thing we can do, the best thing we can do is to open our mouths and speak, pray, and sing the truth about God and His Word 
And I assure you, our hearts will follow. That is the end of my written message. I just, uh, I just want to encourage you men, um, as I heard you, you singing this morning, um, it's a beautiful sound, man. And I think you know, a lot of people <laughs> might think like for, for men, um, you know, singing is something that, that uh, they don't want to do. Or what, what I'm finding in this group, especially this morning, just hearing y'all's voices um, it's powerful. I, feel, I find when, when men get on fire for Jesus, they're, sometimes they're the loudest, <laughs> loudest of singers in the room. So remember, it's not about the, the quality of your voice. It's not about singing in tune. Um, God's, God's asking for a joyful noise. And just for our own souls, I really believe this. been leading in the church for 20-some years now. Um, there's something that happens in our own heart when we just, just open our mouths and pray and sing these words of truth. That, it, that it's so good for our souls. So it's been awesome to be with you. It's been awesome to hear you um, sing. And may you just be encouraged. I want to just, uh, I'd love to pray for you all before I get off the stage. I know I'm over time, but just, I love what's happening here. It's been amazing to see this group of men grow. And just know, I know you guys are making an impact um, in your families, in your communities, and around this valley. So I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you, and then I'll, I'll hop off. Father, Thank you so much for this time. Thank you for, uh, God, the gift of, of music and how we can use it to honor you, um, to be reminded in our own hearts of how good you are, to hide your word in our hearts and get scripture in our minds and hearts when we sing. And God, I pray for all these men that we would be worship leaders, um, not just on a stage, but in our homes, in our places of work. Um, not just through song, but in every aspect, as Romans 12 talks about, that we would present our whole lives that would be connected uh, to you, to the source. And just pray your blessing over this group. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for letting me come share. I appreciate you guys. Thank Ben Gao. Thank you, so much. you got my pleasure. I felt like that was just a little appetite.